right, so we have a very exciting video for you guys today. You get to come along for Mrs. W and I's date. <laughs> Apparently every day's a date. So what we like to do on our date is we like to uh, dig up the yard. So we're actually putting in a water line, uh, or putting in a yard hydrant for Mrs. W into her garden. How many years have you been going down yonder to turn on the water twice a day? Six years. That's going to change today. We had a hydrant that broke, so we had to fix it. So while we're fixing it, we're doing this. While we're at it. So this is the first time Mrs. W and I have uh, had a chance to use the, the Woods backhoe attachment for the Yanmar. And I, I am so pleasantly surprised. It is, was such a nice little machine. It was a lot stronger than I thought. I've got a background of excavating. That's what I did in construction for many, many years. Had my own excavating equipment. I've run all sorts of equipment, lots of backhoes. And I didn't have a very high expectation for a backhoe attachment on a farm tractor, but it was really, really good. Smooth hydraulic, strong. It was able to dig through the roots and a very, very nice little digger. So here's what we got. So we dug about, about 80 feet of trench. And here's, uh, this is inside Mrs. W's garden. You can see here if I pan around. And what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna be putting a yard hydrant in here, which I'll explain what that is, um, off of the irrigation system. So we dug this trench here through the yard. And we'll be laying in a three quarter inch PVC water pipe, schedule 40. Thanks to Mrs. W's good spotting skills, we found uh, we didn't break any of our utilities. <laughs> I pulled on it, but I felt it. So I, I knew it was in here somewhere, so I was really careful we got lucky. This one, not so lucky, but it's just an old water line that was had abandoned uh, some irrigation line from previous owner. and It's not uh, no longer active, so no problem there. So here we're coming up to where the original hydrant, hydrant was. Now this is not the house water, this is the irrigation water uh, that feeds the yard hydrants to all of our, to our orchard and to our garden. And you can see as we dug down there to tie on, it was actually very fortunate that we did because the old one had failed and it had been leaking right there. So this is a yard hydrant, if you don't know. So a yard hydrant is a, uh, how do I explain this? Uh, it's what you use if you live in a cold environment where it can freeze. And instead of the valve being up here for the water and this standpipe being exposed and freezing and being ruined, the valve is connected to a plunger way down in the bottom, clear under the frost layer. So that when you open and close these valves, right here, it closes the valve down there. Now the important part is that there's a weep hole here right there so all of the water in the standing standing water in the pipe will drain out via gravity into gravel down there and then this will be dry so they're really nice so the reason why this one failed is because you'll see not brass well that is brass well that's brass but what failed was these threads right here not galvanized just black pipe the new one's galvanized with the brass fitting so that should last a lot longer um i think that's it so we're gonna start doing that right now. And we'll cut into T here. And Mrs. W is supposed to be raking. She has a tick. She does? Yeah. I found a tick. So I need to, to get it off of her. Boy, ticks have been so bad the last couple of years. I don't remember them being that, as bad when we first moved here. No, they weren't. That's been really, I thought with us all the cold weather this year, they wouldn't be so bad, but they are. So Lucy uh, had a tick last year. Well, she was acting up, her rear legs became paralyzed. That's right. She had like the tick paralysis, and as soon as the tick was removed, then she was fine. Yeah, we couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. She was couldn't get up, and she couldn't walk, and then we searched her really good, and we found a tick and pulled it off, and within an hour, she was her normal self. She is the dog that everything happens to. She, she likes trouble. It's her middle name. So our trench is about two feet deep. Uh, for this area, you, know, you have to bury your water lines below what they call the frost line. And actually you can get away with 18 inches, 16 inches here. Two feet is, is more than enough. Some places it's really deep, like Alaska I think is four or five feet, but we certainly don't have that problem. We got into a few roots here from the maple tree, but nothing too bad. Here's the, <laughs> they had, the previous owners had put a, utility in that water line right there. I just hooked it. I felt it. The more you operate, 
the more you can feel kind of what's in the ground, depending on what it is. If it's a PVC or steel, you can definitely feel it and stop before you break it. There's a method of digging that way. This type of stuff here, this poly pipe, that's almost impossible. It just doesn't have enough strength to feel, but... There shouldn't be any need to rake this mama with my with my excavating abilities. I should, it should have been perfectly flat, right? It was close. It was close. But you know me. Let's do it. All right, so we've got our water drain. So what we're gonna do is we're basically, uh, the irrigation system is three quarter inch steel pipe and it runs out to all the outbuildings. We're just gonna grab onto it with a T and then uh, Put the PVC over there and, and get another hydrant inside of her garden. So I'm trusting you. You turned the water off here. I did. All right. I'm coming. Oh goodness! Oh, that frightened me. What was it? <laughs> Look right there. <laughs> Good grief. Oh, a mouse! <laughs> he jumped right on my hand. <laughs> get it, Lucy. Get that mouse. I don't want it. I don't want it in my hole. Can you get it? <laughs> Come on, Lucy, get, get the mouse. Get it right there, get it. Get it. Thank you. Oh! <laughs> oh, Jack would be so angry. Jack saves every mouse. It's awful. Lucy, what have you done? Oh, take it out of his misery quickly. All right, I'm gonna go deal with it. Yeah, let's... <laughs> you know, it's such a small creature, but uh, it does startle one. It does startle a person. Oh, now Lucy's going to be your guardian today. Okay, so. All right, watch out, Luce. <laughs> I don't know if you can see. Can you, is it too dark in here? Um, no, it looks like I got, I can see that you're wrenching. Okay. All right, so I put a cap on it last night so we could turn the water back on. Cody thought it was. You can see there's water filling the hole. Not get, too much though. They get to have wet feet now. Okay, so here's something that's a really a good product. If you haven't done a lot of plumbing, for sealing threads on your uh, galvanized or steel pipe, uh, this is called, we always called it pipe dope. They call it pipe thread sealant. It's kind of a, uh, this viscous white gooey stuff there that, man, that really seals up. I like it. I actually prefer it over Teflon tape. It's a little bit messy, but it's it's easier to use. And I think that I think it's better. I do think it's better. So we got the T on, and we've got a little galvanized threaded nipple that we'll use to hook this up to. The nice thing about brass, and one of the reasons why they always use brass in situations like this, is that it will not, um, it will not kind of corrode and, and bait, rust itself or weld itself uh, to the to the pipes. Even after this one, you saw yesterday how simple it was to unthread that because it was solid brass. It, it's it's um, if this was steel to steel with all that corrosion and the minerals in the water, you would um, you would not get it out. You get these in different lengths too. They come in, I think, anywhere from two foot to. I think I've even seen six feet. I like to get them a little bit longer. That way you don't have to bend over so much when you, uh, when you are uh, turning it on. Because everything in this world discriminates against a tall person of height. Have you noticed that? No. You haven't noticed that, but like I, I can't see in mirrors and bathrooms. I have to stoop down. I have to stoop down to wash my hands in the sink. Everything is always geared towards shorter people, or I guess not shorter, but probably the average person, the average height. You sure can get in the tall cabinets well, though. I can, and I can see what's on top of everybody's refrigerator. <laughs> you know what's, Which what's reminds up? me, I need to dust there. You know what's up there? <laughs> dust, a lot of dust. You missed a spot. <laughs> so bossy. 
When you're done with that, can you get me some tea? Oh, absolutely, sweetheart. It's so hot <laughs> out here. <laughs> so moldy bread is an important tool in the plumber's <laughs> toolbox. I'm, I'll show you an old trick. Does it need to be moldy or is that just because that's what we had? That's just what we had. <laughs> so uh, if you find yourself in a situation where you're putting water line in, whether it be copper or, or PVC or plastic, where you need uh, to get the water, keep the water out of it, because sometimes the system will drain and it'll just seem like it drains for days, especially when you're working with copper. You can't have the water in there. It just, you can't, you won't be able to sweat the joint. Same thing here. We don't want a bunch of water coming through the pipe when we're trying to do our primer and our glue it's just not not as good so what you can do is uh, take some bread and you can uh, make a little bread ball there just kind of wad it up into a ball gummy bread gummy bread <laughs> rubber bread <laughs> and stuff it in there just like that so what this will do now is that that bread that will give you give you a little bit of chance to get your fittings all done can you come in here close uh, to get everything glued up and uh, the bread will eventually get wet and just dissipate dissipate and just come out the faucet so it's one trick you can do if you're trying to stop water and it just won't stop running is just stick some bread in there and you'll be good to go now i have a question yeah that's gluten-free bread that's why it's not very good for this because it wasn't it wasn't very just wasn't very gooey but <laughs> it's it's okay okay so pvc uh mrs w was asking about this you use it's use a primer and a glue it's called a purple primer and what the primer does is it two things is it cleans the pipe and it uh, is so caustic that it kind of seals or it kind of uh, softens everything up and helps the glue to bind and when you're doing this you always do both sides i've got this pre-primed you glue and prime both sides and then you bring them together you twist them and hold them if you don't hold them for a few seconds there, there's hydraulic pressure that it will kind of it'll spread itself apart and the in the joint won't be as good so you hold on to it for a few seconds after twisting it and then you should be good to go Ooh. this is the sexy part of home modern homesteading <laughs> along with the weeding <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dirt in there. Usually about 10 seconds is enough. Voila! Does that work? Yep, keep going. I'll start bedding it in. Okay. Are you kidding, Heart Racer? Did you put her in there? I did not. <laughs> That's who it's she is. Funny that dog. Whenever I vacate a space, she takes over. I think she thinks she's the the second in charge around here. I think she thinks she's first in charge around here. Now she's gonna lord over Miss Pants. And the Lord God said that it's not good for a man to be alone and that I will make a helper suitable for him. I have to say that the good Lord knew what he was doing when he made a helper mate for me, because I love that woman. We had to, uh, I, you know, sometimes, I, as, as, as we all do, it's so easy to take our loved ones for granted, um, just to have these expectations that they're always going to be there and they're always going to... Um, give reciprocate that love and and that uh, we've come come used become you so used to and I'll tell you what these have doing these videos has been really good for me because I see things I guess almost through a different pair of eyes and when I'm editing videos I notice and when when she's in them um, my cheeks hurt from just the, the joy from smiling of uh, of her optimism and just what a what an amazing and beautiful person that she is Every time I finish one of these videos, I get up what I'm doing and went over and go out and just and tell herself so she never forgets. But we had a great time. So uh, we're I'm going to um, we've had so much fun with this. We're going to work in the garden for a few days and, and get it up to up and running so so she can um, uh, 
have a little nicer workplace. I've spent so much time, money, and resources on my own shops and and somewhat neglected her garden, so we're going to make that right. And so we'll just be doing a few uh, videos like this for the next few days, kind of a vlog format and uh, what we're doing and putting in the lines. And I've got some uh, really great ideas. Um, I'm really excited. We're going to build some really cool planter boxes um, with a kind of a unique irrigation system. And so stay tuned for that. So hopefully it works out, but uh, that's what's on tap. So thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to like and to comment if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys in the next video.